Democracynow.org. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we bring you the voices from Saturday's March for Science that brought hundreds of thousands of people around the globe out on every continent. We were in Washington, D.C., as we turned to Dr. Mona Hanna-Attisha, the doctor who discovered the connection between the rising blood levels in the children of Flint, Michigan, and the switch to the Flint River as a water source. State officials initially dismissed her findings, but she refused to accept their denials. This is Dr. Mona's address at the march. Hey, how's everyone doing? Woo! I am Dr. Mona Hanna-Attisha from Flint, Michigan, and it is great to be here. And I am here to tell you that the Flint water crisis is not over. We still cannot drink unfiltered water from our taps. So Flint is what happens when we dismiss science. Flint is what happens when we dismiss experts. Flint is what happens when we dismiss people. Flint is what happens when saving money is more important than public health. I am a pediatrician, and every day I use science to protect and restore the health of my patients, my kids. And about a year ago, my research proved that our contaminated water in Flint was leaching lead into the bodies of our children. And I took a risk. I walked out of my clinic to speak up publicly for my kids. Thank you. And I was attacked. But when you are fighting for children, you fight back. And I was loud and I was stubborn. And science spoke truth to power. Science is not an alternative fact, and it is time for all of us to fight back against those who deny science and those who degrade science. It is time for all of us to step out of our clinics, our classrooms, and labs. We need to make ourselves known into the halls of government. We need to hear all of your voices. Today, I march for science, and today, I march for our Flint kids. I am marching for our smart, our strong, our resilient, our beautiful Flint kids. They inspire me to continue to use science every day to make sure that their tomorrows are bright as ever. And I want you to meet one of our amazing Flint kids. And I hope that she and little girls just like her become scientists. But this little one has her eyes on that house, the White House, in, in 2044. So I want you guys to give a warm welcome to Mari Kopany, also known to the world as Little Miss Flint. Thank you, Dr. Mona. My name is Mari. I am a Flint kid, and I believe in science, because Flint kids are smart, and we're brave, and most of all, we're strong. We knew something was wrong with our water. It was brown, and it smelled weird and tasted gross. It was burning my skin and giving me and my family rashes. My family and my neighbors knew something was wrong, but our state didn't want to believe in science. They didn't want to listen to us. They said we were wrong, and finally scientists proved that our water was bad and that kids just like me are getting hurt. Over 8,000 kids under age six exposed to lead. Listen to me. When we don't believe in science, and especially when our government doesn't believe in science, kids get hurt. That's what happened in Flint. For the sake of Flint kids and for all over
over this word, I march for science. <laughs> That was Little Miss Flint and Dr. Mona Hanna-Atisha addressing the March for Science in Washington, D.C. I sat down with Dr. Mona in the midst of the stormy weather after she spoke and began by asking her why she came to Washington for the march. How could I not come to Washington? How could you not be part of a March for Science? In my everyday as a pediatrician, um, I am moved by science. I am guided by science in my care of patients, in my protection of patients. The Flint story is a story of science. It took science to unravel this unbelievable tragedy. Uh, so we need to believe in science. We need to invest in science. If not, we have the risk of seeing many more Flints to come. Explain what you did, how you used science to uncover what took place. Absolutely. So I was very much doing my job as a pediatrician, as a researcher. When I heard about the possibility of lead in the water, um, I stopped sleeping. Lead is a potent, irreversible neurotoxin. It is damning for children and for generations to come. When I heard that there was lead in the water, I put on my research hat to see if that lead was getting into the bodies of our children. And it was. And instead of waiting to publish these findings in peer-reviewed journals, we held a press conference. And we announced these findings because our days did not, our kids did not have a day to spare. So I took a risk. I took a professional risk and stepped out of my box, out of my clinic, out of my lab, um, and advocated for my kids. Um, and that's what needs to happen now every day. Scientists need to come out of our classrooms, out of our clinics, and you know, out of our ivory towers to use our science to better our communities. First, the governor of Michigan tried to discredit you, and then explain what happened. Yeah, so I was dismissed in a long line of folks who were dismissed in the Flint story. Most importantly, the people of Flint were dismissed for 18 months. Uh, they were literally told to relax during this entire crisis. The moms, the pastors, the activists, the journalists, the water scientists, everybody was dismissed. And when I came out with the research that our children were being poisoned, um, I was also dismissed. I was called an unfortunate researcher, that I was causing near hysteria, which is a great sexist phrase, um, and that the state's numbers didn't add up to my numbers. Um, so um, after a few weeks, uh, the state actually looked back at their numbers and said, oh, actually, you know, our numbers do match up with your numbers, um, and, you know, realized that we did have this massive crisis. And what is happening today? So today, um, we are almost in our fourth year of this ongoing crisis. Uh, the people of Flint, to this day, must still use filters and bottled water. Uh, we have had a great new settlement that will guarantee line replacement, the pipe replacement. That's going to take years to happen. We've been able to do a lot of things for the children, which is how I spend my every day. Investments in early education, literacy, health care, nutrition. Um, but we have not yet garnered the resources for the long-term recovery of these kids. These kids need resources for years, if not decades, to mitigate this crisis. And the men who made this decision, the unelected city managers have been been indicted. Yeah, there's been about 18 criminal charges, including those emergency managers, including folks who worked in our water quality department, including folks who worked in our public health department. Uh, so that, that accountability is incredibly important, uh, and we need those ongoing investigations. So you're here in Washington, D.C. You're a doctor. You're an Iraqi American doctor. Yeah, I'm a first generation Iraqi American. My parents immigrated here when I was about four. Uh, if Trump's first immigration ban was in effect, I would not be here. Um, so it's, uh, you know, we have immigrants all over in many of our most vulnerable communities serving, uh, doing our privilege to serve our communities here in the states. Uh, it is frightening what would happen if Trump's immigration policies came into full effect, not only for the health care of our most vulnerable, um, but for the entire field of science, for the global partnerships that we have in science, um, and, you know, really for the future of our scientific discovery. You wrote a piece in the New York Times. Will we lose the doctor who should stop the next Flint? Yeah, so, you know, I've been given this incredible microphone this last year, and I once again felt it was my duty, my ethical and moral responsibility to raise my voice um, in regards to the immigration ban. Uh, so the, this precedent, these policies um, in regards to immigrants are totally contrary to everything that our country was based on. And, you know, Flint is a perfect, exa perfect example. If those were in place, I wouldn't be here. I don't know what would have happened to Flint. I hope somebody else would have done the same thing I did. But there's examples day in and day out of immigrants serving this community. You know, I began uh, by saying that on this day, we just learned this on the grounds of the mall. On this day, Vivek 
Murtha, the Surgeon General, has been fired. They're saying resign, but it's pretty clear he was fired. You knew him. Yeah, he was a great physician. Um, he was a great supporter of Flint. He actually came out to Flint twice during our water crisis um, in support of our efforts, um, tried to advocate for more resources for us, spoke with the people, had town hall meetings at churches, met with our physicians. Um, he's been a great advocate of public health in general, the need for broader support and investment in public health. Um, so I, it, I, it was heartbreaking to hear. I actually sent him a message on Twitter yesterday um, when I heard that um, he was asked to leave. He also spoke out against gun violence. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So he very much recognized, as physicians do recognize, that gun violence is a public health crisis. It is a public health issue, and we need to treat it as such, and we need to increase regulations uh, on gun violence to protect our most vulnerable populations. And I think, ultimately, I don't know for sure, but I think that's why he was asked to leave. That's pediatrician Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha who discovered the connection between the rising blood lead levels in the children of her city of Flint, Michigan, with the switch to the Flint River as a water source. She says the Flint story is a story of science. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, young people take to the stage to talk about the importance of science. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute.